So good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Francesco Costa from the Interventional Cardiology Unit at the University of Messina in Italy. Today, I'm very happy to have uh, with me Professor Tabasson Simon from uh, the Professor of Medicine and Clinical Pharmacology from uh, University of Paris. Good evening, good Professor. Evening. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. So today we are going to discuss the results of the reality trial, which has been presented yesterday at the outline session of the European Society of Cardiology. So Professor Simon, so first of all, congratulations for this huge effort. This is a very important trial. And uh, I think that this will serve well all the cardiology and inter interventional cardiology community. So thank you so much for providing us with this uh, novel and very needed uh, piece of evidence. So, Thank you professor. very much. Thank you. Uh, can I say that, um, of course, uh, these, uh, these nice remarks, I'm sure, will make happy all the investigators who participate in the trial, but also the PI of this international trial, Gabriel Steg and Grégory Ducrot from France and Dr. Juanate from Spain. And I'm, I, I was the scientific coordinator of the trial, but this is, as you mentioned, a huge effort from 35 sites throughout uh, France and Spain. And so I'm sure they, they are very glad to hear you saying so. Thanks. Uh, that's great. And then this is something that we really needed because uh, before the reality trial, we really had no randomized evidence on this field. And uh, actually having uh, anemic patients with MI is not rare at all. It's, uh, we, we see it a lot in our, in our practice. So, uh, Professor, could you walk us through uh, uh, the main results of the trial? So, the stage, I said it already, so this is a trial which included patients uh, with anemia and presenting in the hospital for a myocardial infarction. Uh, could, you, uh, could you walk us through the randomization uh, of these patients, uh, which was the strategy that has been tested? Sure. So, um, as, as you mentioned, these patients uh, had an acute uh, myocardial infarction and the anemia was defined as having an hemoglobin between uh, 7 gram per deciliter up to 10. Uh, patients were uh, then randomized in uh, two arms in an open label fashion. In the liberal arm, um, patients had to be transfused as soon as they were randomized uh, and the target level of H, uh, hemoglobin to be achieved had to be at least, at least uh, more than 11. Whereas in the uh, restrictive strategy, uh, the transfusion uh, was given only when the hemoglobin was uh, 8 gram per deciliter only, and the target to be reached was 8 gram per deciliter. The uh, design of the trial, this is a one year trial duration of a follow up and the result we presented at ESC was the 30 days because this was the primary uh, uh, outcome of the trial. There was actually the trial had uh, a primary clinical outcome, which was the, uh, the non inferiority in terms of reducing MACE. A MACE was defined as total death, recurrent MI, stroke, and urgent uh, revascularization for ischemia. But together, uh, the hypothesis was that the restrictive strategy would be non-inferior clinically, but less costly. And we had a primary uh, economic um, uh, criteria, which was the incremental cost-effectiveness ratio with MACE as the uh, efficacy criterion. So that was the design of the trial. So now regarding the results, um, first regarding hemoglobin, of course, at randomization, uh, patients had both in both arms uh, similar levels of hemoglobin, but uh, both at nadir and but also at discharge, patients in the restrictive arm had a, a much lower hemoglobin uh, level than those in the liberal strategy. Regarding uh, the transfusions, uh, there was a big difference between the two arms and of course statistically significant, but even uh, clinically significant in terms of blood supplies, since we had 55% reduction in, in the blood units, which was transfused in favor of the restrictive arm compared to the liberal. 
we had hypothesized uh, that uh, the um, percentage of the uh, of the events of MACE would be 11% in the restrictive strategy, 15% in the liberal strategy. That was before the trial was, was done. And it was based on the results of an observational uh, registry, in, which is a nationwide registry that we perform in France called FASTMI. And interestingly, we had quite uh, ex almost exactly the same number in this trial at 30 days, which was 11% in the restrictive strategy compared to 14% in the liberal strategy with the relative risk of 0 0.79, uh, which, uh, and, and, um, which had an upper uh, bond of confidence uh, interval of 1.80 and 18. And, and as you know, in the non-inferiority trial, we have to look to the upper bound of the confidence interval and the margin that we had uh, decided prior to the, to the trial was 1.25. And both in the prayer protocol, but also in the intention to treat analysis, the upper bound uh, uh, was, was lower. And so clearly we demonstrated the non-inferiority of uh, the restrictive strategy in terms of reducing MACE in both of these analyses. We looked also to the superiority of the, of the restrictive strategy because this was also pre-planned in case that non-inferiority was met. But the trial was, we didn't find a significant effect there, but obviously the trial was not designed and powered for, for that. Uh, now regarding the cost effectiveness analysis, um, um, besides the blood supplies, we found that the incremental cost effectiveness ratio was in favor of, of uh, the restrictive strategy with 33,000 uh, uh, euros saved per mace averted. And when we look to the both analysis of and the distribution of costs and mace, we found that there was 84% probability of uh, that the restrictive strategy would be dominant, which means that it's both less costly and uh, um, mace improving. So regarding safety, because as you know, transfusion may have some issues in terms of safety also. We looked to the overall safety, analyzed overall safety between the two groups. There was, they did not differ. However, um, in the restrictive arm, there was less, significantly less bacterial infarction, in, in, in infection together with less acute um, respi respi respiratory distress uh, syndrome. So, Altogether, looking to the reduce uh, uh, the non inferiority in reducing mace regarding safety, but also the cost, uh, all these uh, variables are in favor and suggest that uh, the restrictive strategy should be in this target population uh, the the uh, strategy to be used. Thank you so much. This. Uh... This is very needed data because uh, we already knew from our practice that uh, transfusion is a scarce resource. So in the hospital, we have to uh, stick as much as possible to yeah. a restrictive strategy for transfusion and doing so in this uh, very frail population without increasing the ischemic events, it's uh, of utmost importance. So basically we already know that uh, a transfusion could uh, in a way help a patient with MI. So we know that during MI and in the days after an MI, the patient still have uh, a myocardial ischemia. So uh, a transfusion may appear as an easy fix. So I will uh, uh, put up the hemoglobin and the patient would uh, do better. Why do you think that the transfusion in practice, in medical practice, is more harmful than a, an easy fix? I, I fully agree with you, uh, with everything you said. Uh, transfusion is scarce, and but, but has also uh, some just logistic issues in in our clinical practice in in hospitals uh, uh, everywhere, both in, in in our countries. 
And uh, in theory, however, transfusion um, has some beneficial, might have some beneficial effect because it improves uh, oxygen delivery. And, and so that was actually the rational for saying that you should use a liberal strategy. However, there have been some data showing that uh, this oxygen delivery may not be as effective uh, because uh, it actually may be um, uh, because the blood can be depleted in, in uh, um, uh, nitric oxide or uh, in terms in, in uh, two DPG um, in, in terms of storing and, and, and also because uh, the the issue of transfusion uh, when when you give transfusion you may increase uh, platelet activation and platelet uh, aggregation and also um, vasoconstriction and so it may be deleterious in in patients with uh, with MI for example absolutely and uh, another question that I wanted to ask you is that uh, uh, we know, that, and uh, we of course continue to use transfusion in patients that have uh, uh, an overt bleeding. So if a patient has a life-threatening bleeding, we have to use transfusion because in that case it's life-saving. So my question is, uh, did you find any difference among this type of an anemic patients? So we can have a patient that is having an overt active bleeding, and that is the reason why he's losing some hemoglobin. Or on the other way, we can have some patients that have a chronic long-standing anemia, like patients with a CKD and that have been anemic for a long time. Did you look at uh, these subgroups? Uh, thank you. This is, of course, these are important questions. Uh, we looked, actually, we, we did some subgroup analysis. We haven't done everything yet because these are, are, are quite uh, recent results, but we looked actually to, uh, to the uh, subgroups of those who had an overbleeding. Actually, there were not that many, uh, 36, for example, in the restrictive strategy. Strategy. So, so a, a low percentage of patients who had overbleeding, and also we looked to those who had chronic anemia, and in um, the results actually were consistent, and there was no interaction uh, in 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 the impact of uh, uh, the effects of uh, 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 the transfusion in terms of MACE in this subgroup population. Yeah, interesting. And another thing that I found very interesting of the, of the reality trial is the design of the trial. So of course, uh, you and all the groups are really and greatly experienced trialists. And, and I think that the definitive uh, proof is that uh, actually you found the very same event rate in the trial as you planned. So the trial oh, has, okay. been, uh, has been planned really well. And this is actually the, the dream of all the trialists. So what I found interesting is uh, why did you choose to do a cost-effective analysis? So uh, I think it's very interesting and informative. In the interventional community, we are not really used to this kind of metrics, but uh, why did you choose to use this design for the reality? Well, that was a really a, a big discussion with all of us because uh, at the beginning, uh, as, as you mentioned, like uh, usually uh, we were thinking of only presenting a trial of uh, an, a non-inferiority in terms of MACE. But then while we were discussing, we thought that it would be very important uh, because this was actually a public funding trial. And, uh, and also because in, as an academic now, more and more, we have also to think about the cost and the cost effectiveness of, of the strategy we are using in, in the patients. So we thought that would be a, 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 an important questions, question to answer to, to physicians. Uh, uh, can, we, can we have both uh, a clinical non-inferiority but a high at a better cost, and that was that was our our actually um, hypothesis. We thought that the restrictive strategy by using less blood would be cost effective, and so we thought that this could be a a nice design to show both uh, the uh, the non inferiority as a clinical endpoint, but also. Uh, the cost effectiveness in terms of economic analysis. And I think these kind of analysis would be um, quite frequent in the future. I'm 
totally, I'm, I totally agree with you because I mean, you are with the same data, you are answering both to the doctors that are the first user of this information, but also to the, to the policy makers, to the system. This exactly. is uh, of primary importance. So um, just another question, and this is actually uh, more a perspective for the future. So, uh, it's, so do you think that the reality trial is the definitive answer that we need uh, in this field, or we still need more data to, uh, uh, to cover this, uh, this field, this question, this clinical question? Well, there are still many questions that remain uh, to be answered. The first one is the superiority. Is there any superiority for using restrictive strategy uh, in terms of reducing MACE? That will definitely close the story if we can show that. And this is actually what is being planned uh, in, a, in a trial in which we, we will also participate in Europe, which is called MINT uh, trial, which aims to, to answer this question without looking actually to the cost effectiveness, but only to the superiority of, of uh, uh, or not of the restrictive strategy in terms of MACE. There are also some other questions that remain because in this population we had uh, patients who were quite old, they had 77 years of age. So whether in the younger ones is exactly, is, is the results exactly the same? We cannot definitely answer to this question because that will need to have more uh, patients in, in subgroup uh, of younger ones. And maybe uh, by, we are thinking of uh, using the data when MINT will be finished in a couple of time, together with those of reality, to be able to answer some of these uh, questions in subgroup population. So a pooled analysis. So this is a, yes. a, very, a very interesting approach. And this is actually uh, all the major journals are going in that direction, just in order to give open, just to give access to the data and to improve our knowledge of the field just uh, with the collaborative efforts. So, uh, this is a very important point as well. So um, we are now close uh, to conclude our interview. I thank again, Professor Simon for this interview and for all the work and the dedication that uh, the reality trial leadership have put together for providing us with this uh, important clinical answer. So I would like to uh, give a good evening to our audience. This was Francesco Costa for PCR Online. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.